The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to the webinar, The Art and Science of Banking, jointly presented by Nugent Software and NCS. Nugen Software Technologies Limited is a provider of business process management, enterprise content management, and customer communication management platforms with large mission critical solutions deployed at world's leading banks, governments, BPOs, and IT companies. NCS is a member of the Singtel Group and a leading information communications and technology service provider with presence in over 20 countries. NCS delivers end-to-end -end ICT solutions to help governments and enterprise realize business value through digital transformation and innovative use of technology. I am Ruchika Shrivastav and I shall be your host and the moderator for this webinar today. Today we have with us Mr. Kenneth Wong, Director Consulting, Commercial and Large Enterprise, NCS. He has over 20 years of experience in customer engagements and solution consulting. Professional in the Asia Pacific banking industry covering retail core banking, wholesale banking and treasury banking. His experience covers industry sectors like FSI, healthcare, transport, and commercial enterprise. Our second presenter is Mr. Ritesh Verma from Nugent Software. Ritesh heads the global practice for business consulting and through his 18 years of experience has been digitally transforming processes for the BFSI sector across the world. His core forte is the domain of retail and corporate banking in process revamp using BPM RPA analytics for achieving operational efficiencies. Mr. Kenneth Wong will be presenting on trends of digital transformation and future work, emerging trends in corporate banking, digital adoption and transformation in corporate banking. Mr. Varma will be covering how the right technology can drive up the volume for corporate banking and how to ensure business value and enhance customer experience with adaptable digital solutions. At the end of the presentation, we will be having a question and answer session. We request you to type your questions in the question window of your GoToMeeting anytime during the webinar and I shall take them up at the end of the session with our experts. With this, I would like to hand it over to Mr. Wong. Uh, Mr. Wong, we are not able to un uh, hear you. Can you please uh, unmute yourself? Yes, sorry everyone. I hope you can now hear me. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to be here to actually share with you the art and science of banking. Uh, I'm humbled but to be able to share these things with you. Uh, just a little bit background of myself. Um, I come from FSI, so my role basically is to engage uh, my FSI customers uh, in engaging them to understand their digital transformation and their aspiration in the future of work and to really look at solutions of how to actually address some of these uh, uh, strategies that you have in mind. And today I basically have prepared something for you uh, to share about my observation and some of the thoughts to, to hopefully you can get some insights into this. Uh, without further ado, just to go through the agenda. So basically I will be covering the trends of digital transformation. 
and the future of work. Uh, this will be followed by the emerging trend in corporate banking, uh, digital adoption and transformation in uh, corporate banking. Then my partners, uh, this Ritesh will be covering the remaining two of the topics. I believe you can all agree that uh, we're now living in a new digital and shared economy. Uh, so every day uh, we'll be hearing about enterprise being impacted by digital changes that they have to transform. If not, they'll be squeezed out of the competition. However, there are also some enterprises that are very quick in capitalizing on uh, digital technology to transform themselves, disrupt the market. Therefore, they are able to lead the pack among the competition. Now, the trend of this is really a global trend and a cut across in the, uh, industry verticals. It's not just about FSI, but given the fact that FSI are more uh, forward looking, that a lot of times, you know, the FSI kick off the, the disruption in, in these verticals before the rest start to pick it up. So therefore, digital transformation is very crucial for enterprise to be future ready in a new digital economy. And basically in NCS, we actually see five drivers that actually cause three areas of changes, as you can see from screen. The first drivers that we observe is really about new social behavior. Now these days, uh, people are very comfortable about sharing their, their life in the publics, building online community to share, collaborate, even the way that we're going to communicate has changed. Instead of picking up a call, we will tend to do chat messaging to communicate. Now, mobility first is given. And in fact, if you look at now, people are talking about mobility and AI first. So therefore, today we are, we are able to connect to the internet easily. And therefore, you know, when we work on our laptop and our computer, we expect whatever that we can do there, we're able to do it on a mobile. So this is the expectation coming from the users. The third force, the drivers that we talk about workforce demography. Now today we can easily find five generations of workforce in an organization. Now from some research, you know, they, they are expecting that the organization will have 50% of Manila working in the workforce by the year 2000, uh, 20, uh, by 2020. And by the year 2025, the percentage will go up to about 75%. Now, in fact, I would want to highlight that actually there's a one more generation that is rising, and this is the sixth generation, and this is the robots. Now, these are the robots, uh, the soft robots and the hard ro robots that you'll be facing, and these are your co-worker that you need to embrace them into your organization. Now, the fourth drivers that we see is the globalization. So the world is really becoming as one big city. Now the barriers to of, of entry has actually been blurred, you know, and uh, business and operating boundary is really being lowered in most cases. The language that you speak, the currency you transact, and your physical location are starting to matter less and less. Last but not least is the digital technology, whether it's big data, cloud, IoT, robotics, you know, blockchain are all shaping the way that we think, we live, and the way we work. So all these five drivers that we see are changing the way the workers working, and therefore we need to really address the future workforce, the nature of work in changing. Uh, so we need to address the work, the future work, and the workplace has to change. So we need to actually address the future workplace. Now the implication is for organization that not only you need to transform to be competitive, but you also need to meet the demand of future work internally. They, they must really have a designing solution that are user centric to cater to new demographics, a mobi mobility first culture, social behavior, global, globalization, and the ability to be agile to adopt new technology. Now, in this webinar, I've chosen uh, corporate banking to talk about emerging trends since uh, there's still room for transformation as compared to retail banking. And in general, banking is facing increasing competitions, declining revenues, surging regulatory costs, spiking loss, as well as uh, rising capital requirements. Now, over the next few minutes, uh, I'll share our observation of the emerging trend in this uh, corporate banking to date. Now, digital technology began reshaping uh, retail banking uh, a few years ago, 
and it has been much slower take up uh, in corporate banking. However, digital disruption is uh, going to come to corporate banking with a vengeance, and uh, bankers are really finding ways to really brace themselves, uh, and it's under pressure to to really to act on this to actually face the competition. Now we actually look at five things over here for the emerging trend. Uh, firstly, is the fintech disruption. So the disruption started with a new competition from a digitally nimble fintech offerings. Uh, they are quite standalone. Uh, low, they have actually some low cost, some of these provider low cost uh, internal transfers, you know, supply chain financing uh, solution, and then followed by an uh, accelerating way for digital innovation. Uh, most of these uh, players are really evolving the platform and uh, they, they actually come in really to disrupt and to take away some parts of the business from the banks. But however, we also see that, you know, uh, after a few years, we don't see much traction because of the size of the fintech. But having said that, we also see that there are things that we can learn from them, uh, and banks are actually embracing them as part of their strategy on, over here. So over the next five years, we can expect these new digital platform and channels will really attract, uh, help to attract 30% of the traditional corporate banking revenue. Now, in response to this, that corporate banks need to really undertake uh, front-to-back digital transformation by adopting new digital technologies to better counter some of this disruption or even embrace and, and work with them to, to take in their digital platform to be forming part of your, your engagement with your customers moving forward. The second point is about shifting our client needs. Now, corporate clients increasingly demand solutions for specific needs. Now, they want solutions that, that help them to run their business more efficiently, more effectively, and with lower risk. No, traditional financing products uh, where one size fits all will not address their corporate customer need anymore. Uh, from small businesses to mid-sized corporates, they will look for value-added end-to-end solution that offer an integrated approach to managing their purchase orders, competitions, uh, documents, invoices, payments, and working capital financing. Now, as for the large corporates, they will want industry-specific solution that will support their new business model. Therefore, in response to this, corporate banks need to be quick to market a new product offerings and to stay relevant by adapting their operating models swiftly and aggressively to address a different corporate customer segment. Now, the third thing is about digital revolution. Now, both corporate banks and their customers are going through different stages of uh, digital revolution. And uh, while some corporate banks have established leading position in uh, digital transformation, it's digital technology. Many others have underinvested. Corporate customer preference about interacting with their corporate banks are changing rapidly. Uh, and the way we see that we pass growing expectation of fully integrated solutions, lean processes, 34 by 7 access via the web and mobile devices. Customers are actually expecting more than just digitization of traditional corporate banking products. Now, from my, my recent readings of the, the BCG survey of uh, corporate customers, and it, it shows that uh, about more than 70% indicated that, they, that their digital capabilities were an important factor in assessing a corporate bank. So in response to this, corporate banks need to really revisit their omni-channel strategy to create better experience and stickiness. Now, having an e-channel is no longer sufficient. In fact, it's just given. Now, banks need to think about how to integrate seamlessly into the corporate's ERP environments to help streamline their transactional processes and provide real-time payment insights to their corporate customers so that the corporate customer can have a better view of their liquidities and cash flows to, to really facilitate their business. Now, the fourth thing that we see trends coming as a tighter regulations. Now, corporate banks have been working steadily on compliance with Basel trees and uh, all other new waves of regulation, including uh, AML, anti-terrorist financing measures. Now, in the long run, new regulation may affect the corporate banking business even more than an anticipated. Now, these Basel tree capital and liquidity mandates are already fundamentally changing the economics of some of the corporate banking products and customer segment. Just to give you examples, like uh, risk management products offered by tier two banks uh, have been hard hit by new risk weighted asset liquidity and capital requirements as well as a rising operating costs. So new regulation also aims to increase competition
participation and openness in the industry are pushing, pushing the banks to really need to innovate as well as uh, improve their offerings. Now the fourth part is really about globalize. The last part is really about globalization. Uh, continues to really drive major changes in corporate banking. Uh, more mid-sized companies are becoming active in uh, international supply chain and their corporate banking needs are evolving in step. The corporate banks need to forge deeper relationships to support their corporate customer operation as they expand their international footprint or risk losing to other providers who can serve their international needs. Now, if you look at the right side of the, the, the slide right now, you'll see the top technology trend in corporate banking. This was taken from our salience. And you can see that the way they classify broadly into three areas. Uh, one is digital omnichannel. Now, many banks are embracing internal APIs to modernize and streamline their back office connectivity, especially for customer facing digital channel. Uh, now regulatory initiative in Europe, especially uh, PSD2, and the UK uh, open banking are driving banks to create open API developer portals to allow the party as the party access uh, to banking services. Forward looking banks are moving beyond regulatory minimums to create value add services through open banking APIs. Now these banks want fintech developer to see them as easy to work with development of new application grounded in their banking service turning the table from uh, competition to collaboration. Now, in banks that we work with, uh, we are helping them to expose their APIs externally for corporate customers to do its banking related activities uh, directly from its own ERP system with auto reconciliation and without compromising security so that banks can offer self-service to their corporate customers. The second pillar is about innovation uh, through emerging technology. Now, technology is emerging very fast as a uh, help banks to really facing a lot of burdens by complex uh, legacy systems. So there's a need to really modernize and streamline the existing uh, technology stack and interface. Now, this opportunity centered on new technology in uh, data science, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, and uh, robotic process automations. Now, corporate banking has long embraced data and analytics, starting with uh, descriptive uh, statics reports, moving up to diagnostic business intelligence, and now move into predictive analytics and machine learning. Uh, new technology like distributed ledger technology also has the potential to save uh, billions of dollars, especially in key corporate banking product and processes as well. Last but not least, the, the third pillars that, uh, that we can see here, in terms of the technology trend is the legacy and ecosystem transformation. Now, legacy transformation is critical to reduce uh, maintenance spend, freeing up to run the bank technology budgets to fund, grow the bank innovation. Many banks still uh, depend on mainframe to run their back office uh, system for such critical function as customer information, you know, deposit accountings, loan servicing, payment processing. Now, mainframe application no matter how you want to move away, still right now form part of the foundational core technology stack for running the business and will continue to serve their purpose for many years to come. In fact, uh, Reuters estimate that three trillions in daily commercial flows to some of these uh, COBOL system. Now we are seeing more banks modernizing their back office architecture to improve interoperability between legacy technologies and newer system. Many banks are now using REST APIs to breathe new life into their traditional web services architectures. Other areas of legacy transformation include simplifying the user experience by providing a consistent user experience across product silos and improving their client lifecycle management from the process of managing clients during the initial onboarding through ongoing customer account and relationship management. Now, customer lifecycle management technologies often include the all or some of the following business process management, electronic document management, and e-signatures, multi-channel visibility, both internally and for clients' inquiries and self-service. Now, also in data integration and uh, application integration with front and middle and back office system. So in conclusion on this trend, the disruptive trends are in badly damaged corporate banks that do not adapt 
while creating opportunity for those that do so. Now, in these surveys, you can see that uh, uh, it shows uh, corporate customers are underserved digitally, especially those segments you've seen here in blue. Uh, while this situation may have improved, uh, it's surely playing catch up with those in the retail banking sector. Uh, digital transformation in corporate banking has been focused primarily on the back office, while the front office has seen less digital innovation beyond capital market and cash management. No bank has yet successfully digitized the entire value change in any product category or business area. In view of time, I will not go through every of these use cases that you see here. Now, if you look at wealth management in the customer engagement use case, now we can see that advanced analytics can help banks tackle and the, the problems of our underpenetrated uh, relationship manager portfolio. Now these tools identify cross-selling opportunity and suggest the next best product for a client based on logic commonly used by online merchants. Leads with high potential and property are, can be flagged out for relationship managers to engage their customer more effectively. Now, next product to buy tools are particularly useful for the long tail of a corporate banking re relationship manager portfolio, which are often underserved. Advanced analytics using algorithms rather than regressions to group clients with common understanding product needs. Recommendations are built on internal data, example, your demographics, your sector information, business maturity, credit risk profile, um, product usage, volumes, and, and average balance require no additional ex external data and no major IT infrastructure investments. Now, machine learning has uh, advanced to a state that you can do better prediction. So typically, these models can be used to, to help you in terms of uh, leading to a more balanced uh, penetration of, of uh, RM portfolio and uh, can increasingly increase an RM's uh, cross-sell ratio. So the incremental revenue in typically can fall between uh, 15 to 20 percent. Now I'll be happy to have discussion offline or during the Q&A on some of these uh, use cases that I've not covered here. Now in NCS, we actually have uh, developed our future of work point of view uh, and its associated solutions and services to help to enable an enterprise to innovate and achieve efficiency to become successful digital business uh, in five possible ways, embracing some of these uh, leading uh, technologies, uh, emerging technologies that you can see here on the left, the AI machine learning, uh, the RPAs, uh, even for IOTs, some of the chatbots, blockchains, and social media technology itself. Basically, if you look at the transformation, the, you will fall in tends to fall into five main areas. Either through all these uh, technologies, you are able to reinvent your business model, you're able to transfer, transform your, your service and operating model, you can further optimize your business process or digitalizations, or even to reshape and change into a digital operation management itself. Now, regardless of which of the digital transformation uh, strategy and objective you, you want to meet, typically you will see that your help in terms of uh, creating this desired outcome that you tend to want to achieve one is really about customer and employee engagement. There's an improved areas in this area, uh, achieving operational efficiency. And last but not least, is really about innovation and growth in the market uh, by exploiting new business models, new product offerings, new segment that you have underserved itself. So this is what I have for you in a short run of time and uh, in, in terms of sharing some of the trends that we observe from the technology aspect as well as the industry aspect of the thing and how NCS in, in, in the marketplace is helping, helping the enterprise to address some of this trend. So uh, I will hand over this to Ritesh to continue with the remainings of the agenda. Uh, happy to engage you later, Shai, very shortly on the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, Kenneth. May I request Ritesh to please continue? Uh, thank you, Rajika. And thanks, Kenneth, for the enlightening session. Uh, probably 
I'll just share my screen. Just let me know if it's visible. Okay. Is my screen visible? Yes, Ritesh. Thank you. So thanks a lot, Kenneth and Ruchika, for this. Uh, today we are just going to talk about the innovation and technology imperatives in the corporate bank typically focused on the APAC and Singapore markets. If we look at the typical scenario in a bank, uh, the banks have evolved their systems in silos. So probably you would have one system for retail, one for wealth, one for commercial, and all these would be just based on patchworks. So if a new compliance comes in, a new patch is applied. If a new mandate comes in, a new patch is applied. So Typically, what has happened is over the years, it's just a band-aid approach which has been followed and which kind of puts banks into a soup of, uh, so it's it's a ideal mix of whether to innovate or whether to kind of put more patches in. Things become really difficult for such banks to move forward. Uh, depending on their journey where they started and where they are at so singapore and hong kong became kind of our developed markets they started their journey earlier so there would be more patches that will be there more band-aids to kind of work on as compared to the emerging markets like vietnam myanmar laos and cambodia so what we are looking at today are ways and means as to how things can be simplified or how things can be made uh, much more innovative in the sense that they can be worked around. The whole concept of art and science working together is the art is the innovation aspect of things and the science is typically the way that typical compliance and other issues are worked upon, the regulatory framework. It's much more prominent in a corporate world as compared to the retail industry at the moment. However, it, it kind of takes the next step in corporate as Kenneth also mentioned that IOT, social and things like that are more affecting the corporate world now as compared to any times in the past. In, in fact, technology helps economies to leapfrog. If we look at, say, uh, a developing economy in, Man in the name of Myanmar, in 2012, it was the world's second lowest mobile penetration. In 2014, it just kind of launched 3G services. It skipped the analog 2G, 2.5G and other things. So today it's at probably 4G speeds in 2017-18. In 2017, when a survey was done, it was the third fastest growth in the world when it comes to mobile penetration. 105% mobile penetration. In fact, people had two cell phones to kind of take care of things. Now, this brings me to a point that here is an economy which was probably less dependent on mobiles in 2012. In five years time, they kind of really transformed, they leapfrog. So, and this also brings innovations into perspective. So mobile apps, the way people interact with various entities, the millennials, all of those guys have to be now taken care of when it comes to the banking industry. And that's where things become interesting. So if we look at how does new gen add value to the whole chain, why am I talking about silos? Why am I talking about a growth perspective in mobile industry and how I, is it all related to leapfrogging? 
the reason why i'm talking about all this is newgen adds value by critically transforming businesses by innovatively connecting systems people processes and things together which basically means that we create a limitless and agile organization that can deliver sustained customer centricity at the end of the day we are all working for a customer and that's what kind of we uh, our mission is to kind of deliver and the most important thing as charles darwin also kind of quoted was it's not about the survival but it's all about the intelligence and making the most responsive uh, ones that will kind of adapt and would finally work and evolve so it's for the banks to kind of now evolve for probably being being not eaten away by the fintechs use their brick and mortar to probably something better so customer journey as is powered by new gen on a holistic perspective at the center of things is the customer which can interact with the bank through a host of models be it the brick and mortar branches be it the mobile apps be it the web pages and social media so he can interact through any of these channels through maybe if a physical document is presented it can be scanned and digitized a mobile app can can, can have content and document geotagging geofencing and things like that a web page or a social can get into sentiment analysis grievance lead or things like that so using a host of new gen solutions as omni acquire nem and digital sensing all this is captured and passed on to the back end team the back end team can now pass it either on to supervisors for processing or probably external applications can be called for and they can be integrated using the uh, rpa or bots it goes to the approver or it can be automated through a central rules repository and finally all of this can either be archived in a physical storage using the records management and the document management and the communication gets back to the customer communication management system to be passed on to the customer for working purposes now in this overall journey newgen kind of digitally transforms banks in order to kind of Uh, move to the next level if we look at new gen's configurable unified platform how it's kind of managed is we've developed solutions on top of the the platform that i just talked about in various domains for lead management it can handle campaign management leads 360 degrees view of the customer customer service request management similarly the same platform can be extended into consumer banking custom commercial banking payments and settlements compliances and maybe other aspects of processes like account payables and others so i'll just kind of uh, take a minute to just leave the slide so that you can go through it and observe the crux of the whole thing is that the same configurable unified platform or cup as we call it can be used to kind of host and work on a, a, a host of things including account opening commercial lending trade finance maybe check truncation and things like that let's look at how the platform is worked upon on a corporate lending framework which is developed by new gen so the solution highlights of the overall solution are in regards to multi channel client onboarding and interaction 
So you have respond. There are a host of ways in a which a customer can actually interact with the bank, or the relationship manager can interact with the backend customers and other applications. So they can be a web or a mobile app. It can be capturing of data or scanning of documents, real time OCR or multi ID support. AI based facial recognition and all those can be used for capturing customer information and taking things forward. At the back end, there is a workflow and case management for maybe handling things on a straight through manner. Exception management, compliance and legal approval flows, real time reporting, credit checks, fat uh, compliance checks and things like that ratio analysis for perfect processing and finally there are integrations with third party systems including maybe tax bodies including kyc and fatca providers including credit bureaus or maybe third party agencies for credit scoring like moody's experian and things like that The solution has been kind of developed as an accelerator and it features things like comprehensive uh, underwriting that's done, limit tree management, covenant monitoring, collateral management, approval workflows, and the whole platform is entirely configurable. If we just drill down into the features and functionalities, you have a comprehensive document management module which allows you to capture documents and manage them, write comments along with them to give a holistic document perspective to things. We've also integrated with third party bureaus and third party systems in order to kind of give you a complete 360 view of the customer and the directors and the bodies who are kind of working on it. So you have the OFAC check, blacklist check, negative check, deduke check. We've also integrated it along with Moody's and Experian to kind of bring in the scores wherever required. It has multiple facility support, which basically means that it, it can support the existing facilities as new facilities into the system. The entire system is based on risk based uh, rate of calculation RAROC, which basically means you can have variable pricing and it's all uh, configurable and rule driven. You can have multiple amortization schedules and modes they can be all shown to you so that you can kind of showcase the right solution to the end customer. And finally, there are one to one and one to many collateral versus facility mapping. So a facility can be mapped onto the same collateral or probably multiple uh, collaterals for giving a loan configurable risk scoring and calculations. What we have noticed is that each bank has its own methodology of credit uh, risk scoring and calculations that are done. The rule engine and the master data management in the system allows you to kind of configure it as per the requirements of each and every bank. The next example that I'm just going to share with you is for the trade finance. Now trade finance are very, very typical in nature. If we look at it's paper intensive, so you have multiple documents. In fact, it's referred to as documentary credit. For LCs and BGs, which basically means it's very paper intensive and very time consuming. There are multiple sources of information. There's an exporter, importer, intermediary bank, receiving bank and others who probably give all sorts of information which is difficult to track and work on. 
in fact what we've seen is that trade finance virtually has one of the most outdated obsolete processes that are worked on and which makes it fragmented and disjoint multiple small opportunities and high operational costs which basically means that there would be multiple small lcs flowing through there would be bgs working on in fact what people normally track are the large ticket deals and the smaller ones get missed out trade finance in fact has multiple legacy applications the banded approach that i was talking about earlier it has grown in such a way that there are multiple applications there can be a trade finance core system there could be a core banking system there is a, a swift generation system inward payment system and things like that which makes it a lot of duplicate work has to be done and it's very very mundane and we all know about the endless compliances finally everything is manual and it needs to be kind of human dependent that's why you notice that there are only a few trade finance branches in a plethora of hundreds of branches that a bank may be working on in fact uniqueness of the trade finance application in newgen is that we work on multiple channels of initiation so a customer can walk in into a branch work on it you can have a customer web portal handheld device in fact you can open up kiosks in industrial areas through which the customer can directly upload his documents and give a request for an lc customer information exchange is done using integrations which basically means that once a document or a data has been populated it's just exchanged between systems duplication is avoided in most of the cases what we try and achieve is straight through processing which basically means that using the rules engine we try and eliminate the need for reviews of cases meetings of banks and other things limit availability check we integrate with the core banking system in order to ascertain what are the limits that have already been consumed by the by the bank by the customer and what are the limits that are now available for them in order to work end to end the the transactions are posted and also we work towards trade loans in fact the trade finance accelerator has all trade products that have been configured into it it handles multi currency action on events configurable charges swift is auto generated and auto consumed and it's all configurable coming from a pbm platform so one of the most critical things in trade operations is handling of discrepancies the penalties are so high that if a discrepancy goes unhandled it probably uh, it has a lot of penalties associated to it so discrepancy handling is handled end to end through the trade finance accelerator that we talk about reopening of applications lc amendment bg amendment and other things are entirely done and they can simply be called for instructions for all parties in fact we talk about uh, the paying instructions the the instructions for reimbursement of charges and other things are all captured into the system and they are transparent across parties follow ups for further processing most of the times why a human or where things get missed out is that we we don't notice where follow ups need to happen and how we need to work on is amply tracked in the system advice and action at events document generation so uh, export bill can be uh, the legal documents can be generated through the system and passed on and finally also the swift can be generated through the system and they can be sent out to the appropriate parties for working upon 
Uh, I think in the interest of time, that was all from my side. And maybe I'll pass things on to Rinki for, uh, for uh, to Ruchika for processing purposes for the Q&A session. Thank you. Thanks, Ritesh. We have a couple of questions, but since there is a shortage of time, I'll just take uh, one or two out of them. And for the rest of the questions, we'll definitely answer them via email to the individual attendees. So the first question is, uh, has any bank automated corporate credit? And what is the success of the project? So I would request uh, Ritesh if you want to take this question. Okay, uh, we have quite a lot of banks which are now automating corporate credit. Up till now, what was felt that since corporate credit is such a human dependent kind of an application, uh, it cannot be automated. So what we've seen is with technologies like BPM, business process management, document management and the likes coming up, multiple banks are taking up this thing in fact they are also trying an experiment around it as well as i talked about raroc they are trying to kind of have a variable rate of interest for processing of loans for corporate loans and that is getting them ample things in fact some of our clients in middle east india apac are utilizing it to a lot of extent in fact what we have started to notice is that Advanced countries like US have started to work on these from a, on a cloud perspective as well. Okay. So I hope it answers the question. So it's it's being adopted and worked upon. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, the second question is the trends in banking and APAC shows an uptrend in the rising of regional banks. So uh, do you think there is a decline of the global corporates in the banking sector in APAC? Maybe anyone from Kenneth and Ritesh can take this question. Hi, um, can I try, try to understand the question again? So uh, the question says, uh, there is a trend which has been seen that the regional banks in APAC are rising regional and local banks so do you see that there is a decline in the dominance of the global giants like hsbc and other banks in the region okay let me just share my point of view in terms of the digital bank and the local banks in the context of corporate banking uh, while i do observe that in in the global arena the digital bank, fully digital bank, is disrupting some of the traditional bank, uh, especially in the retail banking side. But uh, when you start to look into the corporate banking, I would say that you know very unlikely you will have a digital, full digital uh, uh, corporate bank. I think the, the the thing is that there is still a fair amount of relationship management that is going to be involved. Although we are not talking about brick and mortar. But that will still be so. So there will still be engaging point on a human level. So I don't think that it will be a full digital bank. However, uh, as much of the processor that's being done manually will be very much digital. So that is to say that all your traditional channel have to be able to embrace some of the processors as well as the functionality to be able to be digitized rather than through some uh, traditional method of communication. So that's how I see in terms of uh, how the digital bank will come in. And at the same time, not forgetting the new technology like blockchain and all those things. Uh, probably the digitized part is also the whole ecosystem. It's not just about the bank itself. Uh, the traditional bank has to look at how do they tie up with the ecosystem, whether it's a supply chain to be digitized as well. So that is the part that will be digitized. Uh, 
uh, time for another question. So this is for Ritesh. Uh, why is it so important to have an integrated workflow and document management platform? Uh, let me take that. I think a typical corporate banking initiative in any bank would involve two critical things, a lot of documents, one, and second, it will involve a lot of human decision making. For handling this, and, and probably one of the reasons why this was not automated so far was there was no single technology which could automate both of these aspects in a major way. So workflow and document management integrated together is most imperative to handle such, uh, such needs of a corporate banking automation process as such. And I think that's, that's most important. I took the example of trade, for example. Uh, you have a lot of documents as uh, LCs or probably bill of lading, bill of entry, insurance, and things like that flowing, which are to be captured and taken forward in order to kind of automate it properly and decisions are taken on it. That's why document management and workflow are so important and imperative for any automation of such processes. Rachika, over to you. Thank you, Ritesh. Uh, Kenneth, do you want to add something? Yeah, I think there are in especially when it comes to corporate banking itself and whether it's in the trade finance as well i think it's imperative that really i agree with ritesh that uh the document type of the thing need to be exposed to multiple party to ensure that it's able to facilitate the whole process itself so yes i will i believe that that has to come integrated in the single platform to be shared and able to be actually uh, take action about it So uh, that was all in the question and answer session. So thank you, Mr. Wong and Mr. Varma for your valuable insights on the present and future of banking in APAC. Thank you to the entire audience for your valuable time and tremendous response. We shall be sending across the presentation and the transcript for all the questions to you. Goodbye and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.